Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cabral Concept. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor. And what I wanna to do today is our first Friday in review. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go through some of the things I've been experimenting this week, nutritional supplements, uh, books that I've been reading, a few articles as well that we're gonna go over, uh, possibly debunk. So the first thing uh, I wanna go over is Every week, I typically add in one new nutritional supplement to my repertoire simply to try it out, simply to test it out. I use and have used well over a thousand nutritional supplements. Uh, most of that is research-based. When I was kind of what I call repairing my own body, building my body back up, I used to take 20, 30 supplements at a time. It's not something that I'd recommend you do, uh, certainly not. And the reason is, uh, when I was going through this process myself many years ago, there, there just wasn't the data, um, there wasn't the sharing of that data that we do have now. So I also didn't have kind of the guide to show me how to narrow that down to maybe a half a dozen great supplements that I could use to get me to where I need to go. And the reason people has asked is just can I use one supplement? Well, the problem with just one supplement is that these aren't pharmaceutical drugs. These are basically food extracts, herb, herb extracts, extracts, minerals, vitamins, whatever it might be. So there's no one thing that kind of does it all. And sometimes the issue is you don't want it all, you want one specific side of that. Meaning like you might want magnesium but not calcium because they, they can be antagonists to each other. Sodium but not potassium or vice versa. So the, the issue is it's very hard to get away with just one nutritional supplement. However, once you're feeling well, you can certainly wean yourself off of almost all nutritional supplements. You might need a few for your own support. Um, but the other thing is, um, y in the beginning, you need things to either fortify your body or potentially remove some of the toxicity. So without going into that too much today and going on a diatribe about nutritional supplements, what I want to do is talk about one uh, product, and a lot of people have such anxiety, stress, um, burnout, fatigue, adrenal fatigue, adrenal exhaustion, whatever you want to call it, these are a lot of supplements that I do want to uh, review on this show about that. So the, today's supplement they're going to review is something called Integrative Therapeutics. That's the name of the brand. Um, and it's called HPA Adapt. So again, I don't have any um, stake in these particular companies, but I do use products that are only uh, meant to be used by either licensed doctors, um, licensed health practitioners, board certified naturopathic doctors, anyone that gets them directly from a, a um, functional medicine manufacturer. And the reason I like that is because they do third-party testing. Um, that means a lot to me. I want to make sure there's no heavy metals, no molds, no contaminants in those. And that typically when you use a really good reputable brand, you're getting the dosage in the product that was actually used in the study, in the research that got people the results that you're looking for yourself. Now, and a good example of that is that um, maybe you're looking at um, a product like ashwagandha. And you're like, okay, that's a great product that's been used for thousands of years, literally recorded history of over 5,000 years of the use of ashwagandha. Now it's an herbal adaptogen, helps decrease stress levels, calm the nervous system, and give you a little bit of a boost if you need it. Now, so again, a lot of great research on that. However, it depends on how it's extracted, depends on how it's used, but also, if you just put 30 milligrams of it in a product, that's not at the research dosage of how it actually works. So that's when it's kind of like a little sprinkling so they can use it for marketing purposes. And again, that's why it really does matter who you get your nutritional supplements from. So today I'm gonna to review a product called HPA Adapt. Um, what HPA Adapt stands for is called, uh, it's essentially hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis or ADAPT. So what that means is that we're going to um, change how the body deals with stress. And that's really important because you can't get your energy levels back to where they should be if you're constantly stressed out, which means if you have your foot on the gas the whole time uh, throughout life, and then your body's trying to slow down because it's exhausted, now you have one foot on the brake. So you have a foot on the gas, foot on the brake at the same time, you need to first relax the body, calm the nervous system before you could ever potentially help to rebuild it. So again, depending on where you're at in the adrenal fatigue stage, meaning that if you're in the alarm stage, um, the exhaustion stage, or kind of like the resistance stage, which would be in the middle, it really does depend on which nutritional supplements you're going to use to help with that. Um, a lot of people don't react well to licorice root, but those who do, those who are in the exhaustion stage, that can give them a little bit of boost, kind of maintain the cortisol levels that they do have, even though they're low, it can make them last a little bit longer. Today we're going to talk about a product that 
a lot of people do really well with and it's a very gentle product but it does bring energy levels back up and it calms the body. It's a product that I really enjoy, um, really have been um, enjoying using as well and it's, I felt a noticeable difference because with a lot of supplements you don't actually feel a difference, you just know that they are helping your body in some way, again as long as you need it for your body. Again, supplements are meant to supplement your body for what your body needs. So this particular one has a lot of really nice researched um, ingredients. It has five in total. Um, rhodiola, which is a nice product um, as well. These are all herb, flower based, uh, root based as well. And uh, this one is actually meant to give you a little bit of a boost, a little bit of energy boost. Ashwagandha, which I talked about a little bit, that's a great calming Ayurvedic uh, product. And in this right here, they're using the root in a leaf extract. Um, we have Eleuthero, which is also referred to as Siberian ginseng. Uh, it's a nice product for stamina, increases endurance, really, really fantastic. Uh, these are all between 150 and 400 milligrams per four capsules. And again, sometimes you don't even need all four capsules. You can just start with two capsules uh, right when you wake up in the morning to give you that little bit of a boost. And then potentially uh, right before lunch or mid-afternoon when you start to get that low. Because it's not going to give you that caffeine-based spike, just a little bit of boost and a little bit of calming effect. Um, the next one it has is holy basil. Holy basil is a, another great prized Ayurvedic herb um, as well. Typically a leaf um, can also be used in tea like Tulsi based teas. And the last one is maca. Um, it's, maca has really been become popular now in the media. Uh, it's fantastic for um, boosting hormones in a positive way. Um, boosting energy levels, increasing libido, basically making your body feel overall fantastic. So um, it comes in powder form, many different forms. I really like this. You can take two to four capsules right when you wake up or split the dosage of four capsules if you want throughout the day. Um, if you're experiencing any of those kind of stressed out or exhaustion based phases or you need to calm down anxiety levels but you still need a little energy at the same time I do recommend giving this a shot it's not an expensive product I don't actually remember off the top of my head where that's weighing in um, cost wise but I'm assuming for a 30 day supply which is what this is 120 veggie capsules somewhere around $30 or so okay a lot of good nutritional supplements cost about a dollar per day you can kind of gauge it like that just for capsule based um, so again really great product we'll link it up in the notes uh, to where to get it reputably um, do try to get it directly from your naturopathic doctor functional medicine doctor or online from a reputable site all right, the next product I want to talk about is our my book pick of the week. So I go through at least three, four books a week. Um, typically all new things that I'm trying to focus my study, my research on that week. Um, this week I actually went back through a book um, that I really do enjoy. It was one of the cornerstones, uh, or cornerstones I should say, of looking at nutrition from many different facets. I'm someone who's not a paleo guy, a vegetarian guy, a vegan guy, a raw guy. I'm whatever works for that particular wellness client, that particular person that I'm working for, but you do have to have some cornerstones of your program. And cornerstones of your program are developed by people who have really done a lot of research. Now, this book, um, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, this was written by Weston Price. So Weston A. Price, uh, there's the Weston Price Foundation right now, they carry on his work. So this is obviously a big book. It's a very fascinating book. And what it does is, this is a dentist, um, clinically trained, uh, dentist who decided to travel around the world to look at nutrition and how it affected people's health but almost from a, but not almost from a dental standpoint he actually looked at um, face nose and teeth deformities and how those changed over different generations pretty amazing stuff so what he actually said out what far a lot of people don't know this is he thought he was gonna find that veganism was the perfect diet for every human out there that that would lead to the greatest amount of health aspects. And I think that being a vegan or vegetarian can be very healthy for some people as long as it's done correctly. But for a lot of people, it ends up being eating a lot of processed carbohydrates, a lot of the wrong foods, which breaks down the body and leaves you really devoid of the minerals um, and uh, vitamins that you do need. So this is uh, over 100 years ago, really looking at uh, Again, traveling all across the world to indigenous tribes, meaning that civilization hadn't really touched, or what we want to call civilization, had really not touched these people in these specific tribes. So he got to see people in their own environments, eating natural foods, um, grown locally near them, and how it affected them. But then he got to see that next generation, the people who lived 
10 miles away or, or closer to cities and how those same people, the grandchildren, their, their actual teeth and facial deformities started to kick in. So I'm going to show you a photo here. So you can actually see how we have nice clean, um, straight teeth on some of the kids, and then how there starts to be some of those um, malalignments. Um, the, the cavities, the um, different things affecting um, not only the, the teeth themselves, but also the faces started to get longer, the nose started to get thinner, um, the ability to basically breathe, deviated septum start to, to sink more in. And now the big takeaway is people like to say, well, this is kind of the guide for true paleoism. That, like, this was the start that once they started to introduce carbs into their diet or grains, that these things started to happen. But you can look at it from a different perspective. What happened was the, the, the next generation started to introduce processed carbohydrates. And there's a huge difference. So they were eating refined flour excess sugar and then these things were leading to the teeth cavitations or the cavities themselves and the weakness of the immunity and, and basically the, the, each generation got a little weaker, not as strong, not as hardy as the generation before that. And also they weren't eating as locally so the people here were equally eating locally grown food and again it, it wasn't the same for each tribe, it wasn't the same for each culture. It actually changed depending on where he was in the world. So further north, towards Alaska, um, they ate raw fish. They ate a lot of things that you would catch in that environment, not as many vegetables. Obviously, it's colder there. Um, down near the equator, it was more fruits. It was more vegetables. Um, in some parts of Africa, it was actually um, raw milk and blood from the animals themselves. Um, in Australia, New Zealand, it was um, bugs and crickets and roots and all of those things that they lived there. But again, what it came down to was they were eating locally and they were eating things that they had eaten for generations upon generations. So my takeaway from a book like this, um, it's an excellent book if you do ever want to kind of get into um, really what can happen and how food makes a difference. I think that's the biggest takeaway is that we don't think food really affects us at all. It does affect us and it affects the generations even beyond us as well. So my takeaway is, is eat as locally as you can, but eat food in its whole form if possible. And that means that if you're going to eat some grains, try to eat them in their closer to natural form and that will help you out a lot. All right, the last review we're going to do this week um, is actually an article. Uh, I won't pull up the article right now, but the article was just sent out, and it was essentially a review on five supplements that you shouldn't take. Uh, keep in mind that whenever a, um, a media source comes out on health or on fitness, it has to be sensationalistic. And most of the time, it's just based on one or two sources, whatever it might be, and it's just to make a great story. This one kind of pulled apart five supplements that are really popular and that have really been used for hundreds if not thousands of years. One of those supplements uh, was on echinacea. Now, even if we just say, so there's a ton of research on echinacea saying it does work. Um, it improves immunity. Um, it, it does um, slow the duration of a cold or help you get over from it faster. These things are proven from research, some research studies and some we can pull that do not. Now here's the thing. Echinacea, which uh, people don't go deeper into how these things work. It's not just an all for nothing type of thing or all for one type of um, function. Supplements and herbs work for people that need them. And hopefully that makes sense. So we do a study on vitamin E and it helps with cholesterol. It doesn't help with cholesterol. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Well, guess what? It helps if you need an antioxidant because there is a lot of inflammation or free radical damage and vitamin E happens to be a very strong one. So let's go back to echinacea though. Echinacea has been proven to increase Th1 immunity. That's a branch of your immune system. And certain autoimmune diseases, cancer, things like that have different branches that get stronger than the other. So guess what? If you're already strong in Th1 based immunity and you were to take echinacea, probably wouldn't make that big of a difference. But for those people who might be a little swayed towards Th2 or weakened in that type of um, immune balance, it's going to help tremendously. So my big takeaway here is, without belaboring the subject, is take everything you read with a grain of salt. It was written, it was written most likely for sensationalistic reasons if it was just um, an average journalist writing about it who doesn't really know about health and fitness. Not to take anything away, but still, you're just writing something just for um, controversy, like uh, top 10 or five worst or whatever it is. That's for sensationalism. That's typically to sell something to you or you know sway you in one way or another. Um, my job to you is to debunk a lot of these things and make sure that you're not falling for the typical things written in articles and newspapers, no matter how 
big you think that source is. Again, a lot of these things, do your homework. Ha they have been used for hundreds of years successfully, um, and I see them work all the time in my clinical practice. Again, not everything, but echinacea is something that works phenomenally well. So I hope you enjoyed our Friday in Review. We'll be back next Friday with more supplements, books, articles to review.